Da bin ich raus, Marus. Nein, nein, nein! Well, here we have two Model 12s. A 12 gauge Model 12 and a 410, wait a minute, Winchester Model 42. Not a low volume gun, but probably one of the first commercially made 410s. And I gotta tell you, this one's hurting. It hasn't seen the south side of an oil can in probably, I don't know, 60 or 70 years. We had to beat around out of the chamber. Um, but other than that, um, they both say Winchester on them. So let's do a fairly deep dive, take a Winchester Model 42 all the way to the bottom and come all the way back out again and show you guys how that's done because I will guarantee you this gun and this gun do not have buckets in common other than the name. Let's go. Manual of arms on a Model 42 is essentially the same as on a Model 12. Underneath in the back, there is a slide release. We'll push in on that, and that'll unlock the slide. Don't reach up inside the trigger guard until we've done a couple of things. Now that the slide's open, we want to look down inside here and make sure that there isn't a round in the barrel. And we're good, and we're all the way open. You got to do this first, especially on these Winchester guns, because in order to take them down, you have to close the bolt. So now you're handling the gun. You better just make sure there's nothing in it first. That's, that's just... Here we go. All right, we're gonna close that and then we're gonna flip this thing over and I'm gonna lock it down here. Now on a standard uh, Winchester, there is a cross slide here. Hang on a minute, I'm gonna move the gun over so you can see it. This pin right here pushes up. This pin goes through the, uh, the, the magazine tube, comes up, roll it over the top and then you can pull this entire mag tube forward, pull the slide forward, and the barrel comes off. Okay, we have interrupted threads. This entire front end is what the Model 12 has in common. The whole gun's the same up in the front. Um, things are just a little bit smaller, but if we really start looking at this now, you can see the purple color here. This is what everybody's calling patina, whereas the gun was originally this color right up under here. Look at that, look at how beautiful this thing was. Oh my God. But here we go. They reported a failure to eject and why did we have a failure? Oh dear God, look at the inside of that chamber. My, 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 look at that. Gee, I can see why it was failing to eject. It's that color all the way down on the inside. Now I bet you the inside of mag tube doesn't look much better either. You need to look into chambers of your guns and down the bores before you put a live round of ammo in them. There's a variety of mud dauber down here in the south that likes a hole that's somewhere between 0.38 and 0.42 inches in diameter. And you get a lot of these guns that got a mud dauber nest growing right here, right where my fingernail is. Check the bore clear before you pick a gun up. Just saying. Butt plate screw, it's orange. butt plate screw it's orange they're both orange um, there's just signs of just I wouldn't even call it dirt loading the guns just dry and what do we need in here we need a regular flat blade screwdriver Keep inward force on the screwdriver until that pops off because what you don't want to do is just have this whole thing wind up on the deck then you break the stock and now you're in a world of hurt that's a separate anvil for another day there are actual boils boils of corrosion up underneath this see it coming off this is why you got to get up inside these old guns because they're just dying underneath the stock line 
You say, yeah, it's just another gun, but I'm going to tell you what, they're not making any more of them. And we're going to get to a point where Stevens 311 is going to become a damn rare thing. And we got to start taking care of what we have because nobody's making any more of them. All right, we're going to change camera angles, get down on the bench, and figure out how to take this piece of uh, this piece of kit apart, and it needs to come apart. Full disclosure, I have not been in a Model 42 in multiple years. Um, so we're going to grab a screwdriver that's going to fit these two slots. When you take those screws out, take a good look at them and make sure they're the same. Sometimes those screws aren't the same. Sometimes the screw is holding something in. And you gotta make sure about that, all right? Now, I'm not hitting the side plate. I'm hitting the frame in an attempt to knock the frame away from it. And it's actually beginning to lift. You can start seeing that line there. You heard it pop loose. Notice we didn't do any prying. We weren't beating on anything. I'm using the wood end of it. There's a reason why the wooden end of this screwdriver looks like I beat the crap out of some guns with it because, well, I beat the crap out of some guns with it. So there we go. Now the side plate's off. You can see that this is definitely not a Model 12 from here on out because this is all a totally different gun. There are coil springs in here. There are flat springs that are wound around. There's a lot going on in this box. And this is a great time to take a photograph. Digital photography makes us worthless and weak. Back in, we can see we have a carrier, right? And this carrier is being lifted by this spring. And I'm going to guess, because this is on top, this is going to be the quickest thing to pull out is the, the, uh, the shell carrier, the lifter. Some of these screws are left-handed on guns like this because if they rotate, I don't know. So I'm going to lift that spring free. And as you can see then, that, that spring right there pivots on this pedestal right here. Does this come out? No, it does not. This spring can be wound off of this stud here like that. So this is the carrier return spring right here. I'm going to set that there, and then we're going to make an attempt to uh, bump this carrier retention screw up of here. Okay, we got lucky. Oh, I was right. It is left-handed. I don't, I don't know this. I'm just telling you that a lot of times when you're pivoting around a screw, watch this. If I go, I'm going lefty-tighty, righty-loosey. You see that thing coming out right there? There it is. There it is. That right there is a one of a kind on flipping obtainium screw. Don't lose the screw, don't get it bent. Easy to identify because it has left hand threads. Okay. You guys saw me dancing around before with the light and I just took control of the iris and opened this thing up a couple of clicks because I want you to be able to see what the hell's going on down inside this. We took off the carrier and then this is the carrier spring right here. Now we're down inside the gun and we had the left-handed screw and the left-handed screw is that little gizzy right there. And you can tell because the threads are wrong around it the wrong way. Dude, what I want to know, okay. So when the breech locks, the bolt locks up into that recess in the top here. And what I would like to know how to do is how to unlock that. What is keeping that locked in? That lock, Right there, ordinarily the action bar would come in and trip it, but that lock will pick up and then the bolt can be pivoted down. And when the bolt is pivoted down, it's allowed to come to the rear and we should be able to get it through this morass and take it out. There it is. So there's the bolt. Bolt locking surface right here, this shiny spot up on the top. So the gun, the bolt comes in and it kicks up to lock. Right now, we're not gonna further detail strip this. This is that lock that we tripped right here. 
what I did was is I pushed in on that and allowed the bolt to come to the rear. Ordinarily, the operating rod's gonna come in right here and do all that for us when we pull backwards on the pump handle. Okay, so that brings our attention to this little bit of craziness here. This is like a figure eight spring. It comes under, over the top, around this stud, underneath itself and back up and over the top of these two studs here. And this appears to be the interrupter arrangement um, for resetting the trigger while you're, while you're pumping it. I don't really know. So if I don't know this, the first thing I do is try to get weight off of the springs. And then when I have the weight off of the springs, then I can look at what it's going to take to say, remove the hammer, and then we can get to everything behind it. So I'm wondering if that's an assembly pin. Okay. So we got a pin sticking through the side of the gun here, and we're just going to see if we can't get this moving. Okay, you heard the pitch change while I was hitting it. And the pitch change meant that that thing there is moving. Okay. Um, we just rearranged this shop. And I mean seriously rearranged it. And I don't know where Buckus is in this place. So just bear with me. Lead block. Leave the punch in the hole. He's so chatty. He talks too much. You're right, I do. Leave the punch in the hole because you don't know what's going to explode when you pull it out. So we know it's going to do something that has something to do with that spring. And it's almost like they invented this thing for us to take it apart, isn't it? There we go. Okay. Lots of interrelated pieces, parts here. And what I'm trying to do is get a good, hard look at this so I know how the hell to put it back together again later. So this V8 spring that I showed that came under, up, over, underneath itself and over, I honestly believe we can just snap this off and this whole thing would explode, but I want to take it all out in one piece. And I think it's going to be that screw right there. All right. There's a screw down in here. Let me let that finger out of the way. There we go, right there. I'll undo that. And that'll come out. Go in there with a pair of pliers, fish that bad boy out. You see how that screw's got a, a, a ledge on it? It has it threads and then it has a boss, and the boss is what things rotate in. Kick that out from underneath there. And I believe this whole thing's gonna come out in one piece. So here we go. Now we have the this is the hammer. This part right here, when the bolt comes back, is what disconnects this whole mess. And then you see how that pivots? So when the mainspring is pushing to the rear, it's actually driving this whole assembly to the front. So now we're using both ends of the mainspring. I wanted to leave this in one piece because I don't totally understand the interrelationship. It has something to do with that little slidey gizmo right there. See that spring loaded right there like that. That'll pop back. We'll take a look at that after we get it all converted. We'll go back out and take a look. But that is what that's supposed to look like when it's done right. There's a hole in the safety here and there's a D10 plunger underneath it. So the safety, I'm guessing, you can push in on the D10 plunger and then roll the safety around sideways. And I've got to have my finger in front of it because I don't want it to take off. Naturally, I got to just put it down on the pad. So you see here, then we can push the safety out. And what we did was we just used this hole for purchase in order to roll it sideways. And the plunger skips over the top of these two grooves right here. So there's the plunger. And in fact, let me have that little pair of pliers right there. Right on. Okay, so we're going to just pull this out. Right? So that plunger comes out. Whoops, I'm a little lost my orientation there. That plunger comes out, and I would bet that down inside this hole, there's a spring of some sort. And I can't really see because I'm off that. Oh, look at that. There's the spring right there. Cool beans. So that pretty much strips the receiver out. Uh, the trigger was pretty straightforward. I popped it out. So that just that strips out the receiver. And now we're ready to boil this. The dirt loading and the rust loading weren't too bad. With that you could see, but God, was this thing dry. We had shankers up under here. It's just, 
it could look a lot better, and it will. Let me review a couple of photographs that I took on my cell phone um, as I was taking the gun apart, just to show you what I'm talking about. I like to see, like, for instance, this is everything that came out of the bolt, laid out in the order it came out in. I don't do a lot of Model 42s. I don't, I mean, yeah, I could figure it out, but time is money in this game. So you're not in a hurry. You just don't have time to dilly-dally. And, and I don't know how the heck else to put that. You're, you're not in a hurry, but you're trying to be efficient without getting weird. In this shot, you can see what I'm talking about, the difference between the original rust bluing, which is jet black, and what everybody calls patina. I'm gonna start calling it patina. That's gonna be my joke here. Somebody brought it up in the comments. And I do not understand why people value a gun that's this color purple. So once you strip all of that patina off and you convert all of this oxide and you take all of the oil and boil it out, this is what the surface of this barrel actually looked like. And, you know, we'll go back in and cart it. You can see up here by the muzzle, it was, I had begun to cart it. Um, and we, we had to run it back through the tank one more time. This gun in the uh, all interest here got ran twice. But this is what you're looking at through the top. So I'm gonna say again, patina is just a layer of oil rust. So I get asked, how, you, how do you card the inside of the barrel? You card the inside of the barrel with a brass bore brush or a bronze brush. Um, and in this particular case, we had a lot of corrosion inside the chamber here. It is important that whatever you put in here has to be softer than steel. Do not take a stick, roll some crocus cloth up on it and run it in and out of here. If you change the dimensions of this chamber, you will ruin the gun. So all I do is take a little bit of steel wool, some 4 aught steel wool, if you need a little bit more aggressive, in this case we do, and I just roll it onto the brush and it works. Um, and in this particular case, right, and then just... We do not want to open up or change the dimensional tolerances inside this barrel. All we're doing is literally buffing the rust over smooth, but that's the best you can hope for. So we'll do that. We'll come on out and we'll blow it out here. So uh, let me cover up my mic so you don't have to hear this. Get up inside here with a flashlight. <laughs> Much better. All right, we're going to change camera angles here briefly, and I'm going to set this thing up to show you guys what it was and what it is. Way better. Now I don't know how good this is showing up, but there's some, there's some actually some small pits in there. But this is way better than that orange bundle of morass that we had before. way better and we did that with a bronze or a brass bore brush and we spun it gently and that's all we've got to need then we run it the rest of the way down the barrel the the rest of the gun is kind of in this format and you see how blue this mag tube turned side plates now there's some uh there's some i wouldn't call it corrosion but some inequalities you cannot come back through and buff one of these guns and make them look brand new again they were only new once but in this particular case, a little bit of used motor oil. Look at that beauty right there. I mean, wow. Okay, this was hiding underneath all of that gack. All right, let me get this thing the rest of the way oiled. I'm just using old motor oil or lawnmower oil. We say it every time for your very first oiling. After your after like a day or two, and all this finish hardens off, you can go back to an actual gun lube if you want to and that will not be a problem. It's only the very first oiling after you come out of the conservation pot. Use the cheapest, least detergent motor oil you can get your hands on. Well, here you have it, a Winchester Model 42 torn all the way down on the bench. We've got it separated into its major uh, groupings. And when I was cleaning it, I made sure that I kept the screw sets together. Like for instance, this is what the parts look like out of the bolt. And then I also had other parts that came out of the action and I kept those in separate T-balls 
when I was uh, cleaning them. And a T-ball, for those of you guys that haven't been around here for a while, kind of looks like this. This is a tea ball. It's just something that you put a little bit of tea in, and then I keep a um, I keep a, a lead projectile in it to weight it down so it doesn't float. So when you're doing these little itty bitty parts, they can come up here into the tea ball and then they'll sink to the bottom, and it keeps you from losing stuff when you're doing it. It's also a great way to say segregate everything that went in the bolt from everything that goes in the receiver, and you don't lose anything. So. I'm, I'm finding myself having to say things over again that longtime watchers of this channel don't have to go back and do. Um, the colors on this thing came out stunning, and it's, it's, we did not re-blue the gun. We did not take it down to the white. We did not strip the finish off of it. All we did was stop it from dying, and at some point, I will reiterate, when does a lack of maintenance turn into pay, Tina? Somebody needs to tell me that. Okay, so we got everything oiled here. I'm just going in and grabbing the end of that. I've actually pulled a rag through it. Just making sure everything's good and wet. All right, very good. A couple things I want to point out on this mag tube really quick. There's an arrow right there. And let me make get this arrow right high, right there. You see the arrow? And that arrow is going to tell you when we line up um, on the front end of the uh, of the gun and we know that we've got everything in you'll see that arrow right there and when those two arrows are pointing at each other we know we did something right all right um, this is an interrupted thread so it goes in halfway and rolls up I had to make a couple of tools here um, to take this apart the right way because all of this has to go together in a very specific order so you see this spring here that's actually a spring, and what that's going to be is what the forend's going to run into, this spring. So when you come all the way forward, once the bolt locks forward, you're not beating the crap out of the front end of this thing. So there's kind of an order that this goes together in. And in this particular case, you see these here? That's going to run up like that, and that's, right? So now in order, we got to put the wood back on first, but in order to get this on and tighten this up, we're going to need a spanner that fits over the top of this. So I took a just every, I didn't have a Model 42 um, four-end spanner, so I made one out of a wrench for tightening up the chuck on, I guess, any one of a number of uh, routers that were in here. Whenever you make custom tooling like this, always label it and stick it back in a, bespoke toolbox. I've got one in the back of the room you know, whose function in life is to do nothing but hang on to these tools. In here like this. That will come in and then hook into that. And that's how the tube is driving the, um, driving the action bar. The wood over the top here. Slide that up inside the slot there that's designed for it. Okay. I'm trying to stay in the center of the camera here while I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. So, very, very fine threads on this cap. So, you're just trying to just find where they begin. Don't force them. If you've got to force this, something is wrong. Run this around. And then what will happen is eventually, and I'm guessing we're going to run out of room back here. And this will drag up tight. We're going to get to a point here where we're going to need this wrench. And it looks like it's going to go around one more turn. Don't crush the forehand. But the tool goes on. And now I'm going to show you how I would do it. But I'm going to, I would put my two fingers right here in order to keep the wrench from popping off. So once this, once this loop lines up with the channel here, so I'm going to put my fingers on it from the back end just to make sure I'm pressing down. That's it. You don't have to go around another turn. You don't have to kill this thing. Just get it to line up, and there you are. There are other ways to do this. I've seen people put screwdrivers in here. Just, just make the tool. This doesn't take that long. You can actually buy this tool, and yet I figured out I was going to need it sometime about five minutes before we were filming. So you know how that kind of thing goes. Mark it and throw it in your toolbox. So I've got that slid 
back up in. There are plenty of reference materials which tell you how to put a Model 42 back together again. So, yeah, I've got my cell phone open. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this by memory. So unlike a Model 12, you've actually got enough barrel thickness here. They were actually they were able to put a um, a small uh, cut in this barrel that allows you to just set this to set this gizmo in. And you can even see in this picture, there's the side view of it right there. Okay, very good. Okay, so here we go. A long time ago, somebody took this piece of dowel rod and decided that this was going to be their, their two-round migratory bird plug. Um, and I always like to make sure, I always like to just take, there's one cartridge right there that would have to fit inside the mag tube, and here's the second cartridge. So right here at that line is about how long I don't want this tube. So right now, if we look at that, yep that's right there you can't get a third cartridge in here so this is right the other thing i like to do is i like to taper these plugs a little bit i like to taper them a little bit here that's awful bright but i'm less here let's go wow look at that i i cut a little taper in them just because i think it uh it keeps the ends of the springs from binding up i think so let me get this reeved up on here. So in the United States, there is a migratory bird regulation that says you're only allowed to have three rounds in the gun, one in the chamber and two up the pipe. So we put these plugs in. Now, if you're gonna go upland bird hunting, you pull this out. But down here in South Carolina, up along the coast, there's a lot of ducks. So pretty much everybody just walks around with the plug in. We have a, uh, that's the follower right there. So let me put a little bit of uh, gun lube on that follower before we stuff it down in there. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit on here and put a little bit in here. And that'll pretty much grease up the entire inside of the tube. Okay, we're just gonna stick that in there like that. Okay, and then when it rolls up to the end, make sure that that's free to move. All right, and, and it feels free to move. Um, we're just going to, yeah, see, right there. Okay, so we're good. So do that check because, you know, every time you screw something together in this thing, make sure that you've got it uh, where you want it. Now, next picture, knowing how the nose plug goes in, we've got the arrows lined up back there. We talked about the arrows. So right now, this is in a place where it would be rotated in the clockwise direction and the arrows would be lined up and the gun would be locked together. So when we put this in then, we know that with the legs facing down, that end of the screw will go there because when we undo the gun, this will rotate that way 90 degrees, right? So we gotta be smarter than the gun when we put it together. So this will go in here. there bang you see how the end of that screw hole lines up right there now we had three screws that were not all the same and these two screws that are down here in a bench you can't see them because if i let this go it'll go these two screws are the same so those are the two that hold in the side plate this is the odd man out so it's got to be this one and i've got to reach in front of you guys or this whole thing's going to explode on me and i'll show you here in a minute gonna come on up for me. there we go Okay, so the screw sat down inside that recess, all right? Now that's going to leave us, this will be tight, and then this will be loose. Okay, and that's how that was set up. So that's tight and loose. And then the pin 
Again, I'm back to my reference material here about how that pin actually went in. So let me have a look at that. Okay, so now I know that when the pin came out, that little dipsy doodle was up there, so that goes in like this. I, like I said, I don't try to remember all this stuff. I just set myself up so that it's harder to screw myself or kick that through. So that comes up, that can roll around, and that kicks down, and that's what locks it from rotating up take the gun apart, pull this thing out, and bang, you're in the game. So now we've got the entire front end of the gun put together. We've got all of this set up, and this is the takedown part right here. While we were messing with this, there is a, there's a gizmo right here, and Bruno's going to reline this for me. That gizmo right there when you pull that screw out, that three tooth unit comes out and it allows this to rotate slightly. This is how you set how tight the front end of the gun is. It was right, it's not a moving part. I didn't mess with it during this conservation. And I recommend you don't either. If you need to tighten one of these guns up, that's a little beyond this video. So when I took the original photograph of the disconnector, I took a picture of this spring, you see, because I think this spring should go this way. I think that lines up, but if we put it this way, it doesn't line up optically, you see? I think there's an up and down to this spring. So and I, I think it's gonna matter. So I just went ahead and did it that way. And that goes on there and wraps around like that and bang. We're gonna need that spring in there and that's going to lock in like this. This is then going to come over the other side and snap over that stud. You see how it would do it? Okay. Good to know here in a moment. That stud went down in there, and now we have the same presentation. Let me see here. Make sure I've got this going the right way. Uh, wait, 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 wait. It goes like that. Okay. So this is, hang on. There we go. So we've got it lined up now the way our picture says to line it up. You follow? And then what would be left here, and we'll put this down on the bench and do it, but would be to drag this over like that and then bring this piece up and snap it over the, up the top of that like this. And there's no way I'm going to be able to do that with my fingers not it. There it is. I don't know how the hell I was able to do that. But that's how it goes together, and that's what you're using your documentation for because then it allows you to come back in and put it back together again. We know it came apart because we took it apart, right? You guys don't think I've ever put a gun together in the wrong order. You're wrong. Okay, so we have this taper pin here. and what I, It's not a taper pin, but it's a, a, um, a, a pin with a head on it. I'm going to put a little bit of a lube on it. And we're going to push that down and kick that through like that. And I guarantee you it's going to go in a lot easier than it came out because this thing fought me coming out. Okay. All right, let me try this again. Then we're going to put safety in. Boy, who knew, right? Okay. Now, can we see through this hole right here? Yes, we can. Hang on a moment. I'm going to roll this around. All right. So if you look through the hole where the safety is, you can see the bottom of that trigger blade coming in. So if the safety prevents this from coming down, we will have effectively blocked the trigger and that's where we're at here with this thing. All right, we need to be in upside down like this. You remember when we took it out, okay. When we put this through, we're gonna put it through with the flat side in and then we're gonna roll it around so that it comes up so it'll go in this way. And then we want to be right on the top of this when we're rolling in, bang, and it'll come down. All right. So we're gonna put a, a dollop of oil up inside that hole there because I'll guarantee us first time this thing's been lubricated in forever. The little titty part has to go out. It won't work if you put the flat spot out. There we go, okay? You don't wanna shoot that if you can get away with it. 
So for a right-handed guy, pushing a safety through this way gives you red, you're dead, all right? So we've got a, a slope here. We'll come in this way. And then where was our augmentation port? It was right there. That was the thing that allowed us to turn it, remember? So we come up here. We get clear there. We get clear there. And once we're there, then we can stick that tool in that we made into the hole and rotate it up and bang, bang, okay? So this way is on safe and this way lets it come all the way down safe, all the way down, okay? Very good. Okay, I'll put that there. This, this. I mean, am I going to be allowed to come behind? No, I'm not. I can't do that. I have to do it. You got to roll it around. Yeah, it's got to be that way. It's got to be that way. Seems pretty intentional. It is really intentional. Okay, this is the slide release. There's the, there's the divot that that little itty bitty screw is gonna hang on to. That's gonna run up in there. And when that comes up inside here, this is what's pushing up and down, that, that tab back there. So let me see if I can get this clear as day here. So when When that part's moving up and down, it'll actually be moving the slide lock. Okay, see, right there. So now that that's all the way down, we can probably just run that little eeny weeny screw in. I don't know if that's clear as mud, but if you're this far down inside this gun, you probably got it figured out anyway. Okay. Now, if there was ever a moment for a magnetic screwdriver, this would probably be where you'd want it. Nah, just ignore the ravings of an old man. Okay, let me get that slid out just a little bit right there. And then we'll run this in, bump down, and that keeps that from sliding out. So now you've got that wee little itty bitty screw right there, right there. And that's all that's keeping a slide lock from falling out. Parts count on this gun is not that bad. There's not a whole lot of pieces parts in this thing, right? So there you go. Um, and we're good to, uh, we're good to go. If that's down and then the only way to release the slide would be to push up on this. And when you're pushing up on this, you're releasing the slide lock right here, right there. So that's how all that's, that's how all that's working. And apparently there's not a whole lot of motion that it takes to get that to go and do its thing there. There it is. You push up on that and that's what's keeping it back. Okay, we gotta put the bolt back together again, get the bolt in this thing. And then I'm gonna see if we might actually be able to actuate this thing with the side plate off. I don't know how much support this side plate gives, but it's worth taking a gander at it. That plunger goes in that hole. Now, we're gonna pray to God we can get through this without shooting this thing across the room. But this, this deal here is just a straight up, we're gonna shove that back in and then as this clears, the plunger will drop down and on the top surface here, let me get it up against something. So you see how that surface has got like a slant going that way? That's just going to hang on to it. Hang on. Okay, there we go. 
So what I'm gonna do is shove this in and drop it down and I'm gonna tell you straight up, I gotta have my fingers on top of it because I don't wanna go chase this thing across the room. What am I missing there? Hang on. Gotta have it in a vise though. There is no flipping way you can do this and not have it in a vise. Victory here is when that little plunger pops back over the top of that recessed piece. And that's what you got. Generally, I would tell you, if you walk up on a boat like this and you go like this and it's not crunching and it's snapping back, walk away. You see how the end of this spring is not finished? And then there's an end of the spring that is finished, you see? Put the unfinished end down into the tunnel. There's a little divot down here. I gotta find it. There it is right there. Where is my little tunnel? Wow, this thing's gonna kick my butt, isn't it? There's a tunnel right there that's hanging onto that and keeping it from skating side to side, all right? We've already got this pin begun in the hole here. Now it pins only large, only long enough. The pin cannot follow this channel. So that pin's gonna stop at the bottom of this really thin piece here and all the work's gonna be done by this. So just know that. Um, the spring's gonna go up inside this little hook shake recess here. So now I'm gonna try to, try to do all this in one jump. We'll push that down and then Ah, uh, hang on. There we go. Now it started in. You see how it's a lot, a lot further down, and now it's hanging onto it. We'll pop that down. Now let me roll this up here so we can get a better look at it. You almost need three different sets of hands to do this the right way. I want to knock this in while I'm pushing down on this. I'm going to push. So you see how that's rolling? That whole part is rolling this way. Okay, when I push down on it. A5s will do this a lot, those pins that hold everything together. Now we're in. So did you see that intrude into that slot? I don't want that there. I want that to come up right flush. Right there, flush. Bang, now we got it, okay? Now this is in it's spring loaded it's captured and whatever lays in this groove can lay here and not be followed by the end of that pin you cannot have the pin proud of the top of the boulder else it'll hang up on the receiver and we don't want to do that either okay so then firing pin train is in two different pieces the firing pin train is uh we're going to put a little bit of oil on this so that's the end right there that actually smacks the primer so that will stick out this way. And then we're gonna have one more uh, pin that's gonna go through and hold all this in, okay? So, lots of interrelationships. Think of this thing like a big four-way intersection. You see this spring right here? That spring has gotta go in the bottom of that hole. Okay, put some oil in it. And then, put this guy in. That goes in there, shove him all the way to the front. Now we can see him, no, we're not all the way down yet. Ah, now we can see, see now it's sticking out, right? So now that we know that that can do that, this lock, the firing pin comes over the top of it. See that little divot right there? So this lock will go in here and we have to push that in to allow us to set the firing pin in there. And then when all that's done, we've got to put a pin down through this hole. So that was easier than mud, wasn't it? That's got to go in there like that. And then 
that has to set down on that and it will hold it once we get it in far enough so let's grab it let's grab it here I have Bruno in here and I have options for help that the average guy does not have that's why I'm not using other available options okay so I'm gonna push down on this in on that until that slot lines up follow and then we're going to run this down flush okay if you're going to go up a hammer go up two sizes i went ahead and bopped it till it's flush over here and it's flush on the inside of that channel we now have a fully um, assembled firing pin. This piece here appears to be consumable. So there was a pin that we did not drive, but this piece here, I think is part of the feeding system. And if that lip right there were to wear, I think that's where one of the, ri the rim on the cartridge will come back and, uh, and, and engage that. Kind of like that, I think. Don't quote me on that, all right. Air hot air nozzle, right? Get it moving just a little bit. That's the right amount of oil to leave in a gun. Just give it a little bit of a blow and let it take care of itself. Okay. We're good here. We now know that we have to have the side plate to support this. I tried to put this thing together off camera and run it. It won't. It, we're not gonna be able to do it. Okay. I'll take the side plate. No. There's definitely an order to this. Okay. Oh, okay. See that little. See that little titty right there. So you said titty. You're right. I do. I talk too much. I understand. Take the back end of your screwdriver and just kind of. Resist the temptation to drag this together with the screws because all you will do is is knock the heads off the screws All right, we don't want to do that <clears throat> We do that and put a little bit of snick they'll be on a lot harder than they were when we found it. That's for sure Okay we Do that Okay, you got to admit that looks a damn sight better than it looked when we brought it in here stock please okay tight but not stupid tight you want to make sure there's no movement but don't don't cream it
mag tube until those two arrows line up. And you lock it in, pull the slide lock. All right, it's together. Now, we're gonna do a couple of quick bench checks here. All right, we know it's empty. Drops, shuts, safety on, nothing. Safety off, pulls, okay, pull. This has got Winchester Speed Rock system on it. So when you come shut, listen to the hammer, okay? So this is one of those ones you can just hold the trigger down and let fly, like a Model 12. Let's go demonstrate that, shall we? So what started out is a pretty gacked up Model 42. Turned out really nice, and I'm hoping we got the sun right this time so you can see just how beautiful this thing is. Um, we've got the, uh, the three round uh, migratory bird plug in it. So live round, live round, there was a complaint when we got it that it was difficult to load. And yet I would have to tell you now, I don't think we're experiencing that difficulty. The uh, safety works, nothing. Take the safety off, okay? And then we can shoot it, hold the trigger back, and it'll go off again when we do it. So that's, that's not too bad. Um, this is a nice gun. I would actually really, really like to own this piece of equipment. It was a true joy to um, actually have it. I'm not totally familiar with the manual of arms. There we go, there's three. So in this particular case, yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. And it's always, it's been a pleasure to do a deep dive and show you guys again how to do this and not screw something up. So just pay attention and start learning. Have a good one.